Hey Dreamers, Bryce here from Midnight Notion, singer, songwriter, musician, and a big fan of Metallica, but I have no idea what my favorite Metallica song is. Could it be Broken Beaten Sp Sparred? I don't know. Let's use math to find out. Cue the intro. So Ted, give it to me now for the best Metallica song. Broken Beat and Scarred is track three from Death Magnetic, and we are going to listen to it together today. You and me, I'm going to stop it every once in a while, not because of copyright, but because I want to analyze everything. Then, at the end, I'm going to grade it using the following criteria. Composition, memorability, emotional response, instrumentation, and lyrics. Each category is a zero to four scale with a grand total of 20 possible points. So we'll find out at the end if this song has what it takes to get to the top 20 list. Both other songs off of this record already have done so. So let's see if this one can match up. But before we listen to the song, you gotta hit that subscribe button. Why? Because I once saw a person walking down the street with an umbrella and that umbrella on the top said, you know, subscribing is important. <laughs> Let's listen to the song. Oh, before I hit start, again, uh, this is another weird one. It doesn't start on the downbeat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the first time through. Okay, the weird thing about this rhythm is that you might think it starts on an offbeat, like of, of the four. Right, boot good gun dun. And it, it's, it's just, it's a strange rhythm. What's happening, it's actually on the and of three. So it's one, two, three, boom, ba doop, gum, boom. And the dun dun part, the dun dun, that's the one and, all right? So the easiest way to count this is to remember that those hits, dun dun, is the one and. Eventually the rhythm becomes dun 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 dun, dun 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 Okay, so remember that one and two and and four and one and two and and four and one and two and that's the way to keep track of this. It gets really weird. It gets really strange. They've shifted the rhythm over so it's really hard to keep track of. But I want you to count at home. We're going to rewind it to the beginning and I want you to find the dun dun and treat that as one and and then one and two and three and you'll count along and don't stop counting. We're practicing our rhythm. Here we go. One, two and three. Okay, how re relieving is it to get to that one, right? By shifting that rhythm off all strange, right? They, they have it all goofy and then when everything comes in, when it comes in with the with double kick pedal and the toms, there's such weird timing going on there and it's so confusing. And even as I was counting it, I was questioning myself. I'm like, am I on the wrong beat? Am I on the wrong beat? I can't be on the wrong beat. You're not on the wrong beat. It's just a weird, freaking rhythm and that's okay as a matter of fact in my opinion that makes it even cooler it's got like a prog rock feel because it feels like we're in a weird time it feels like they put it in an odd measure and then they they they're playing on the off beats right you always want to assume that metallica is going one two three four one two and you know, it, it just, because Lars has a tendency to emphasize the two and the four. So having it on the one and the three is backwards. It's odd. It's strange. But how cool is this intro, right? Put in the comments below on a scale of negative 17 to positive 23, how cool is that intro? <laughs> Let's keep going. Again, they're smashing in those little two four measures and that's gonna happen throughout the song I appreciate that rhythm theory nerds rejoice <laughs> the 
There's always something so cool about just a straight drum riff. Just like, just don't fill it in at all. Um, a fast guitar lick over just a straight groove. Boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cat. Just keeping it simple. Any other drummer would have heard this riff and went boom, 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 cat, boom, 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 cat. Boom boom cap boom 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 cap boom 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 cap boom boom cap but get do do get do do and you know what that's good good for you you're a fast drummer celebrate yay but it's really not serving the song is it knowing where that pocket is and just taking the grip boom ka boom ka that can make it feel so much larger and so much heavier and so much more important. So good job, Lars, sticking to your guns, staying with the old fashioned Lars play style. This is good stuff, man. Sing along. After this. Right? Right? There's something about that rise, fall down, rise again. There's something that Kirk is doing in the harmony of what he's playing versus what James is playing versus what Rob's playing. There's something just so cool about it. But let's talk about those lyrics, too. It's very interesting how we got this. Um, you, you rise, you fall, you're down, then you rise again. Okay, And then it becomes rise, fall, down, rise again. Really cool that you can take a simple concept of uh, just one line of lyrics and tie it into just the four words. And I realize that fourth word is more than one word, but it's really cool to, you You introduce it and then the call, it's like a call and response thing. You do this, you do this, da, 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 and then everybody sing. What don't kill you, make you more strong. That's how you get an audience involved. Repeat it again. You rise, you fall, you're rising, you're down and you rise again. I already forgot it. What don't kill you, make you more strong. That's a really, really great opportunity. And then what do they do? Rise, fall, down, rise again. What don't kill you, make you more strong. They have now given us three opportunities to sing along. We already know what we're supposed to chant. Those opportunities are going to come back in the second verse. And we haven't even gotten to the chorus yet. We're already singing along. Come on. That's that's a good way. That's a good way to get the crowd going. So cool. All right. We are. Yeah. Show your scars. Now we know that that's part of the chorus. Wonderful. And talk about, I mean, we get the double kick pedal back. And with the cymbals and they're still riffing. It's a very riffy song. If you're just warming up on guitar, this is a great song to warm up to because it's not super hard. It's mostly right hand. And then the left hand just gets a do do. It just gets a little, little bit of action here and there, but it's really just a right hand. It's a good rhythm song. If you want to work on your rhythm guitar playing this is a great great song to practice it on not only do you have a lot of up and down picking but you've got rhythmic changes you've got an awkward beginning that's on an off beat so you get yourself trained on how to feel where the down and the ups are and then you've got those additional two four measures in there but what's interesting about this song is that it's always on we have a steady quarter note so even though those two that two four measure is in there, it doesn't feel odd to us because we're still banging our head at the same pace all the way through. Really interesting. Did 
you hear it? It was halved, right? The main riff right before the verse, half as long as it was before verse one. interested in that hit that little shink right the little shink of the they're scratching on the guitar I'm interested that Lars didn't choose to do a snare hit there he would typically do a, a flam which is just hitting the snare with both sticks at the same time but one is just slightly before it so it's got like a pika pika it's just slightly for cha and that would have a really cool impact pa do 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 right it'd be a really cool way to come into the next Heart. So I'm really interested why he stayed on the hi-hat for that. Not that it's a problem, it's just an interesting choice that he wouldn't typically make. So now you know that. Right, break it down. See that? They're adding, they're, they're taking that one little da 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 and they added two more to it, just to kind of keep it interesting, right? You got a section of four, you do it maybe one time through, you do it a second time, you add two on the end, you do it the first time again, and then the last time you add an extra one in there. Uh, it's songwriting, man, it's good composition. All, that's all I could say, really good composition. Correction, it's not a key change, they're just moving up to a different part of the same key signature. But we're no longer on E, we've moved up. I think this is the two, but I don't know officially. Uh, but we're moving it up and we got this different, we, we, we're breaking this pattern, right? We have a boo da boo da boo da boo da Now we have more of a triplet feel. ba ba da boo boo da boo It really feels more threes, right? And it feels, it's not quite halftime, because halftime would be ba 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 ka ba ba boo boo ba ka So he's really boo. Boo, boo, ka, boo, boo. It's broken halftime is what it really feels like. Broken, beaten, scarred halftime. Huh? 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 But another thing to point out is that uh, the solo, I was kind of ripping on the Ripper's solo from the end of the line. This one's different because we started with a climb up. He gradually got higher. And then the second time through, he's playing strummed out chords and then he goes back to riffing again. That's what I mean about building the solo and making something that's really listenable. End of the line was really just the whole way through. This one has rhythmic changes, right? So he, he's going fast, he's building up, and then he does a different pattern, and then he does some diff different rhythmic things, and then now we have a different rhythm part so he can really just kind of ache and make it ache and pain, like, ow, mm. listen to what he does. Hey, again, we're 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 switching things up. I love that. 
da 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 Again, three with a pattern at the end, a tag at the end. And what did we do the second time through? We repeated it. The third time through, we added the emphasized crash symbols. Boom, ka, ba, ka, boom, pa, ba, ka, on the two, right? And then the the fourth time through, ba, ga, 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 double it up. And now we're up at a different part of the key signature again. Uh, we're, we're building something really cool. Third chorus is longer than the other two. There's extra words. Did anyone else who is not a drummer notice that Lars's pattern changed each time we came through that? We started with just a one and three and one and three and one and three and Back a goo, back a goo, back a goo. He's got the double kick pedal going, but then he went to back goo, back goo, ba 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 ba, and he was he was playing with different hit variations. And now this is actually reminding me of Fuel in the chorus of Fuel. In the last chorus, he starts adding in doubles and cymbal hits as well. And he starts, he's emphasizing it on different parts. Same thing for this song. Really cool change up here. Really cool uh, growth of the song. We've built something. We've established patterns. We've broken the patterns. Now we can just play hard and riff and show off and solo and fill and make it really interesting. And that's what they're doing. Well done. And that's the song. Uh, what a cool way to end the song. We have that riff that we introduced right at the end of the solo section, right before that final chorus. Uh, we bring that back at the end of the first, uh, the final chorus, uh, but we still have kind of callbacks to the same kind of hook that we've had throughout the song. Ba -ba 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 -ba. It was that was introduced way at the beginning, but then it became I love that riff. If you listen to the drums, he's doing it mostly on the snare first. Bump, bump. And then he kind of comes down on the on the toms. He's like moving all around the kick. It's a really cool riff. Um, really cool song. A lot of fun stuff to be celebrated. A lot of singing. I hope you got your singing in. Now it's time to get the points in. Here we go. Whoosh. Composition. Once again, I don't know that I can find anything in this song that I don't like. I mean, I guess I could pick it apart and say there's really no like clean section. They just are hard rock all the way through, but there's nothing wrong with being hard rock all the way through. So just because they didn't switch between distorted and clean, just because they didn't use any fancy effects, doesn't mean it's a bad composition. They have a really interesting intro that starts on the and of three, which is odd. And then it always feels like it's on the two and four, but it's actually on the one and three. It's so confusing. We have these extra two, four measures with these hits. We have a call and response section with the vocals. We have some fast riffs over a steady beat. We have some really fun playing. We have some changing keys in the middle during the solo. We have some changing rhythms. We go from straight to halftime to broken halftime to double time. A lot of stuff going on in this song and never once at any point was I bored. I was excited to listen to the whole damn thing and I would be excited to listen to it again. So give me more, please, please, please. That is compositionally a four.
memorability. I don't know if you can get much more memorable than this song. I mean, obviously, Seek and Destroy is very easy to remember. It's only three words, but Show Your Scars is also only three words. And What Don't Kill You Make You More Strong, just because it's a lot of words doesn't make it unmemorable. We already have heard, you know, um, What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger from Kelly Clarkson. We've already heard it as just a phrase that people use. And while it's not always true, it is a very memorable line. There are so many moments in this song just repeating that same thing even rise fall down rise again they repeat the verses over and over that same line comes back so many times that you can't help but sing along you can learn the song probably on your second listen through you probably know all the words by now uh, you can maybe trip up on the chorus a little bit if you don't know you know the order of breaking your feet or cutting your teeth or whatever the whatever the line is you could get tripped up a little bit but overall there's a lot of stuff to remember you could maybe say that the solo -y section is kind of forgettable, maybe? But I don't think so. I think it's very awesome. So overall, for me, I it's hard for me to forget this song. Memorability, it's a four. Emotional response. Once again, I'm happy to hear it. I feel like this song is a hard rock anthem. I feel like any big stadium should be playing this. This is a really anthematic, I mean, even lyrically, it just feels like, let's get, let's like, let's rise to the occasion. This could be used as like in a campaign rally. It could be used in a, um, a you know, any sporting event. It could be used at a, at a uh, you know, your friend's, best friend's cousin's bar mitzvah. I don't know. Is that appropriate? Uh, maybe it's not appropriate for bar mitzvah. I've never been to a bar mitzvah. So <laughs> maybe you could tell me in the comments below. Somebody tell me, can you use this in a bar mitzvah? Anyway, I just think it'd be used everywhere. I am really happy to hear it. I want to hear it more. I wish they would play it more often. I wish they would replace some of the other songs they always play with this one. So emotional response <laughs> to four. Instrumentation. I tried really, really hard. I looked at this song really closely. I mean, I didn't study it with like really, really closely, but I thought really hard about it. And I was like, what can I, what can I bring down? I don't want to give them a clean sweep. What, what about the song do I not like? And I honestly can't figure it out. I don't think that I can find a single thing wrong with what the instruments are doing. I love the guitar riffs. I can't hear much of the bass, but it's supporting very well. Um, it's doing what a bass should do. Uh, the drums are playing really spectacularly. We got a lot of double kick pedal. We got some off beats all over the place. I was going to emphasize the third chorus, but they're all over the song. We have a lot of really great singing from James as well. So honestly, I can't find anything wrong with it instrumentally for Lyrically, here's where I'm going to get more hate on the internet because we've returned once again to the very difficult discussions. I want to brace you all because we've had this discussion way back on And Justice For All. If you missed it, go check out Justice For All and come back here. I have a very negative response to the word rape and I know what they're trying to emphasize with the song. I know, I understand they're trying to illustrate the, 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 the negative impact of what life can do to you. However, I have a lot of close personal friends and a lot of women in my life who would hear this song and be off put by it. And it is important to me that my favorite song is something I can share with everyone. We maybe don't know if James has been raped. We don't know. It is possible, but we don't maybe know that. I haven't looked into it. But rape is a very serious subject and you don't just say, I've been raped when you haven't been raped. That causes a lot of problems. And just to insert it into a song because it illustrates a negative uh, emotion, a negative feeling, isn't necessarily the right way to go, in my opinion. Now, I know that this record is over 10 years old, and I know that growth has happened since there. I don't know if maybe they don't play this song because of that, I doubt it, but it is something to note. So long rant, but I am in the business of being kind to everyone and being respectful to everyone, including in the words that I choose to use. I know that myself in my past, I've used words that have offended people. I've used words that I don't believe in anymore. It is important to grow and learn and change as a responsible adult. It's not about cancel culture. It's about being a kind person and respecting other people's boundaries. So I knock it one point for the mention of that word. Otherwise, I love what this song is saying 
about rising to the occasion, about all the things that have beat you up in your life, about saying, you know what, screw you, trauma, screw you, past addiction, screw you, everyone who told me I couldn't make a video every day for 91 days in a row, I'm gonna do it anyway! Rah! I <laughs> love that. This is an anthem. It should be played as an anthem. I'd like one little word to change, but it's only one word. So hopefully the rest of the song resonates with you as much as it does with me. That is lyrically a three. And so Broken, Beaten, Scarred gets a grand total of 19. You know it's enough. Where does it wind up? Oh, everyone's going to hate me so much. It is tied in second place with Hero of the Day and No Leaf Clover. I don't know. I feel like I can hear the internet comments coming in. How on earth could you put this song with No Leaf Clover and Hero of the Day? There's no way. You know what? Hey, I'm looking for my favorite Metallica song. I did the math. The math added it up and it showed me this as its score. So far, every single song from Death Magnetic has been top 20 worthy and I'm going to stand by it because they're very well written songs. Maybe I'll have to do this series again in another 10, 20 years and maybe the numbers will change. But as of right now, it has what I'm looking for. So now it's your turn. You add it up yourself. Do the math. Put in the comments below, tell me what you would give this song based on my criteria. Then, tell me what you want me to do with these ties. How do I break these ties? And then, tell me what you want to hear next. After we're done with these last couple records, should I keep with metal? Should I go to rock? I'm more of a rock guy anyway. Should I go to pop punk? Should I go to pop? Should I go to rap? I'm really interested in a, different, a lot of different genres. So maybe some people would like to hear a rocker's review of something completely different. So let me know. Maybe Make sure you check out my band, Midnight Notion is available all over the internet, so stream it, put it on your favorites list, share it with your friends, and of course smash that subscribe button because tomorrow, you and me, we're gonna, it, well, tomorrow is the day. You know what day it is tomorrow, the day that never comes. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.